Hello everyone, it's Jonathan Harmon with the J. Harmon Home Team of Keller Williams. And uh, I get asked a lot about our jargon. And one of the pieces of jargon that we use all the time is the term concessions. So what is a seller concession and what are some examples of seller concessions? And uh, that might be one of those things that you've been embarrassed to ask. So I'm just gonna tell you, how about that? So a concession is very simply anything that the seller concedes to the buyer. Okay, i.e. they give it to the buyer. All right, so it's typically gonna be a buyer cost, but the seller agrees as part of the contract to pay for whatever that is or to give it to the buyer, right? All right, so what's some common examples? Okay, the first one and probably the most obvious and the most common is closing cost. So anytime that there's closing cost involved in a loan uh, that's in a transaction, um, it's always a cost to the buyer. All right, now the seller can pay some of those on behalf of the buyer, but understand that those are buyer costs and they're asking the seller to pay them. And if the seller pays them, that's a concession. Got it? Okay, along that same line is title cost. Now you'll hear agents all the time that talk about it's tradition to pay this or that or whatever. And title cost is usually what they're gonna be talking about. So this is gonna be the cost of a title search, title insurance policy for the lender, and a title insurance policy for that buyer. Okay, title insurance just says, hey, we ensure that you have clear title to this and there's no other liens that we haven't found or disclosed, all right? So a lot of times a seller will pay for that title insurance on behalf of the buyer, which means they've conceded it, which makes it a concession, all right? Number three would be a home warranty. You see this pretty often. So you've got a little bit of an older HVAC, maybe an older water heater, maybe the house is a little older, maybe it's brand new and the one year warranty from the builder ran out. So they give you another year uh, worth of a warranty uh, from one of the, the many home warranty companies out there. Okay, so that could be a concession. And then we've got stuff, okay? Now this is where it gets a little fuzzy, all right? A refrigerator, uh, typically, at least in the state of Tennessee, is not um, auto populated into the contract of staying but a lot of times fridges stay. And if they do, that would be a concession. And usually a lender is not gonna have an issue with a fridge staying, okay? Now, where it starts to get a little fuzzy is if we go beyond the fridge, washer dryer, a lawnmower, a couch, lawn furniture, any of those kinds of things become personal property. And in that situation, most of the time, the lender is gonna require you to take that out of the contract. Now, the seller can still sell it to the buyer and they can sell it to them, you know, super duper cheap, um, as part of a separate transaction that's just between that buyer and the seller. But usually the lender won't put it in there because they don't, make, they don't lend on personal property. And that's how they see it. If it's in the contract, then that means part of the value of the loan is tied into a lawnmower. And that's not the business that they're in, okay? Um, appliances, we can almost always get by with a washer dryer um, and a fridge pretty much always, okay? All right, here's some other things that people don't necessarily think about as seller concessions. One of those is occupancy. So sometimes, especially if a house is vacant, that seller will allow the buyer to move in a couple of days before closing. And typically that would be a rent type situation, but maybe they'll allow that person to move in a couple of days before closing and not charge them rent, okay? I wouldn't count on that though, because there is a lot of gray area there as far as liability goes. The next one is repairs. So. I really, as a seller, don't have to make any repairs even if you demand them. Now, you're perfectly welcome to walk away, but if I choose to make those repairs as part of the deal, then that's really me conceding those repairs. Does that make sense? So you're asking that seller to make them. They say yes, they've conceded that. That's a concession. Okay, and then the last thing here, and this one happens occasionally, especially in some of our rural properties, and that is some inspections. So stuff like a well test or a septic test or... Um, trying to think a survey, some of those kinds of things, um, you might pay for, uh, it's, it's something that the buyer wants and the seller decides to pay for them, okay? So those are some examples of concessions. Remember that this is all a negotiation and remember that every single one of these affects that bottom line. And as a seller, what you really wanna look at is, what am I gonna walk away with? So if the price is up here and I can concede just a little bit of stuff, then that means my bottom line is here, that's a good day potentially. It all just depends on what it is that, uh, that that seller wants. Hey, thank you so much for watching. This is Jonathan Harmon with the J. Harmon Home Team. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again so much. Bye.